school. Yeah. All my respect for the man that never seen that. Paint fat, don't be shy. Your fingers, then you lean back. TV. I'm your director and host, Shannon Pramal. Thank you for sticking around with us yet again for another week. But this week, we're bringing up a topic um, that's pretty very relevant uh, every day, except now that with the natural disaster events that have been occurring in the South Pacific, more specifically in Tonga, uh, we're talking more about climate change again. So for those of you that don't know, what is climate change? Well, allow me to explain. Climate change refers to long-term shifts in temperature and weather patterns. These shifts may be natural, such as through variations in the solar cycle, but since the 1800s, human activities have been the main driver of climate change, primarily due to the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas. Burning fossil fuels generates greenhouse gas emissions, also known as GHGs, and these act like a blanket wrapped around the earth, trapping the sun's heat and rising the temperatures. Examples of greenhouse gas emissions that are causing climate change include carbon dioxide and methane. These come from using gasoline from driving a car or coal for heating a building, for example. Clearing land and forests can also release carbon dioxide. Landfills for garbage are a major source of methane emissions. Energy industry, transport, buildings, agriculture, and land use are among the main emitters. Greenhouse gas Concentrations are at their highest now in the last two million years, and emissions continue to rise. As a result, the Earth is now at about 1.1 Celsius warmer than what it was in the late 1800s. The last decade, which was between 2011 and 2020, was the warmest on record. Many people think climate change mainly means warmer temperatures, but temperature rise is only the beginning of the story, because the Earth is a system where everything is connected. Changes in one area can definitely influence changes in all others. The consequences of climate change now include, among others, intense drought, water scarcity, severe fires, rising sea levels, flooding, melting polar ice, catastrophic storms, and declining biodiversity. Climate change can affect our health, ability to grow food, housing, safety, and work. Some of us are already more vulnerable to climate impacts, such as people living in small island nations, such as Fiji and Tonga, and other developing countries. Conditions like sea level rise and saltwater intrusion have advanced to the point where whole communities have had to relocate and protracted droughts that are putting people at risk of famine. And in the future especially, the numbers of climate refugees are expected to rise. So with that being said, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about climate change, the environment, and kind of a little bit more about what happened um, not too long ago in Tonga. So today in our studio, I'm joined by none other than our lovely hosts, both Pranay Sharma and Rebecca Singh. So, hey guys. Hi. How, How are you guys are you? doing? Doing great. How are you? I'm, I'm doing tired. Yeah, that's right. I feel that. Um, so today we're here to talk about um, climate change and the environment. So I wanted to ask you guys, do you like know why I'm kind of bringing up this topic? Have you heard about what's kind of happening in the South Pacific recently? Or? Yeah. yeah. Heard of the volcano eruptions and how Fiji pretty much needs to evacuate some of their places as well? Yeah, so it's like this huge thing, you know, like it's all over like social media, on the news, and um, just finding this information even like through family and friends, right? Oh, so yeah. basically there has been a volcano volcanic eruption that happened in Tonga. So for people that don't know how the map looks like Fiji's kind of over here and then Tonga's just look kind of like a little lower b beside it but very nearby um so there was a underwater volcanic eruption that happened in Tonga and it was the most um severe um eruption that was caught on satellite and I don't know if you guys saw the satellite images for that as well but it was crazy like you yeah it was pretty sick <laughs> I mean like in retrospect photo, right yes. yeah but it's just like literally crazy like yeah. it, it's insane like that it was caught um but yeah there was an underwater volcanic eruption and now tonga is just completely covered um they're experiencing their natural disaster fiji's getting flooded like fiji already has it bad anyways right yeah. like literally not even 
well, it has been just a year now um, that they've just recovered. I, I don't want to say recovered, but they've just experienced um, the last Cyclone um, Yasa, and then there was Cyclone Anna. So it hasn't even been a full year since Cyclone Anna, but it's been a full year since Cyclone Yasa. Um, the, so there was two tropical cyclones that happened last year. Now they're experiencing this thing, and it's just like, dang, like, what's going on? So... I just thought it was, like, important that we talk about this and kind of, like, get people thinking more about it because whether you're a viewer um, of the Fijian community or not of the Fijian community, I think it's still a very prevalent pro issue that we can all try and, like, work together and figure out because it's not going to just affect us. It's going to affect everybody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, climate change. I kind of gave the breakdown earlier about what climate change is, but I want to ask you guys, like, what do you... What is your guys' take on, like, environmental issues and climate change um, just here right now? I think uh, when we had the whole climate change, like, protests and stuff going on, mm -hmm. I think this was back when I was in, like, grade 8 or grade 9. Yeah. I, we, I went down there with a whole bunch of friends. We all went just to see how it was. And it was, like, it was interesting to see how many people actually cared. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it now, like, from, like, then, like, 2019 to, like, 2022, I feel like not much has changed. Yeah. But, like... Because, like, our generation doesn't know how to take that action. And the mm -hmm. older generations don't really help out. Yeah. But that's what, that's what I think, in my I, opinion. Yeah. I agree. 100%. What about your experiences, Sunny? So, same thing with uh, what she just said. Mm -hmm. um, not too much has actually changed because we didn't, like, COVID kind of hit us. Mm -hmm. And we took, like, a whole break off of this. Yeah. Totally ignored the whole topic, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And now slowly we're getting back into it because, easily as you can tell, the yeah. world's, like, falling apart slowly yeah. and slowly. Like, volcano eruption happened, and now the Pacific, where we live, mm -hmm. that possibly might just get a tsunami. You never know. Yeah, no, and it's crazy. And Like you said, you said slowly, slowly, but you know what? I'm going to say, I think it's happening way too fast. Yeah. Things are just, like, hitting the roof a little too fast out here. And I think a lot of people don't realize this, and I want to kind of first talk about, like, how privileged we are to be living here okay. in Canada, where we don't have to really, like, worry about too much of, like, poor air quality like we have like air quality warnings like once in a blue moon but that's like if we're getting air quality warnings out here you know things are going south right yeah. um but like we have clean drinking water for the most like most people like the different story for like indigenous communities oh, and yeah. stuff like that right but for the most part we get clean drinking water we don't have to experience like tsunamis floods tropical hurricanes any of that stuff right and so like we, I think, st sitting here today, like, we should acknowledge the fact that we are very blindsided a lot of the times. So a lot of people don't even, like, think about it. Like, how, how often do you guys think about, like, climate change and, like, flooding and, like, this and that happening here? Not I mean, often. never. Almost never. Literally, yeah. right? And I think that's what makes us so lucky here as well, right? Um, but basically, yeah, there was a volcano eruption that happened and it... This is just uh, according to BBC. They said up to 80,000 people there could be affected. Now that's insane because, like, it's a small island. And to yep. have that many people affected, like, that is just crazy. And Fiji faces environmental challenges to the degra degradation of um, land resources, increased risk of flooding. And we see that all the time. Um, coastal settlement, yeah, intuition of, to coastal sediments as an impact of climate change, unsustainable exploitation of marine resources and the environmental impact of urbanization which means uh or which undermines people's quality of life so i want to first ask you guys like i guess i kind of skipped over this but just to see if we're on the kind of the same page like how do you feel about climate change like do you think it's a real problem or do you think it's like a hoax it's definitely not a hoax i i can tell because like i personally believe in it and from what i've seen there's mm -hmm. like throughout like the from what my dad's been telling me, mm -hmm. 30 years ago, there weren't these many problems. Yeah. And all of a sudden, in the past, like, 15 years, there's been, like, hurricanes everywhere, natural disasters almost everywhere in the States. Yeah. And it's slowly moving its way up. Like, they say that San Francisco might be underwater. Mm -hmm. I actually believe in that now. Yeah. Have you ever watched the movie 2012? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Now, that movie, after watching it, I'm like, yo... This is actually a real thing. And you know what? Media does have an effect on how we portray mm -hmm. big issues like climate change and stuff, right? If people can believe in 2012, like, why can't they believe in climate change? Exactly. Kind of sus. <laughs> Rebecca, what about you? Do you think it's a hoax or, like, do you actually believe it's a real thing? I actually, uh, my mind's kind of, like, 
it is a hoax in a way, but I also do really like I do think it's real. Like sometimes I don't know. I that's how I see it. It's like I can't really. Ex- I don't know how to explain that. Okay. But like I kind of go both ways. Okay. Yeah, and see, I kind of go back to like. I'm, <laughs> it's funny. I just took two environmental science classes, and now I'm like, yeah, we need to. Like, I'm so like, I'm amb- like ambitious and like really want to talk, bring this topic up a lot of the time, even in like my daily conversation. So I'm glad that today, like, I get to sit here on like my show and like with you guys and kind of talk about this because I know a lot of people watching this. Like, we all have different opinions, and like, obviously, this is such a big issue that it's like a lot of us don't know exactly what to believe, what not to believe, right? Yeah. And so, like, we're just kind of talking on our own opinions, our own experiences, too, right here. Um, my thing is, like, I can definitely see seeing it being a big issue. Um, and a lot of the time, it's because our own community, our own people, they experience it the most. So, like, what I'm referring to is, like, the South Pacific. Yeah. So, in Fiji, I actually had the great honor of being able to be a part of so many different um, charitable um, activities for fundraising for natural disaster relief actually last year um, one of my non for profits Canadian Federation of Fiji organizations we organized um, a cyclone Yasa disaster relief um, campaign um, for aid and assistance for people back in Fiji this was through TISI Sangam Society of Fiji and through that I got to like actually talk to a bunch of different um, representatives and bodies across the world um, one of them being the UN ambassador um, or permanent representative to the United Nations for Fiji. Uh, that's Mr. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Satendra Prasad. He actually kind of informed us about the situation that was going on in Fiji at that time. Um, and back then, this tropical hurricane itself um, really affected people where all the buildings were collapsed, flooding was happening, main institutions and infrastructures were gone, right? And trying to rebuild that is something that's just so hard. But the thing is, it's not like Fiji wasn't prepared, right? Yeah. The, he was telling us, I, I can't remember, don't quote me on this, but like, uh, it was kind of like they uh, built their infrastructure to withstand about 200 kilometer winds or 250, something like that. Um, but the build, like the hurricanes were so bad where it was like 250 to 300 kilometer winds. And like, nothing stood a chance when you yeah. think about it. It doesn't matter how much you prepare, right? And could you think about here, like, if that happened here, <laughs> we're yeah. done, we're done. Like, we don't prepare for these things because obviously we don't think of it as an issue here, but, like, because I always hear about things happening in Fiji, there's always floods, there's always this, there's always that, that it, like, it really keeps bringing that back to me that, like, you know what, climate change still exists. It's getting worse. It just keeps getting worse because literally now, every year it's happening. Like, every year we kind of hear of, like, a mini flood or something like that, right? But Cyclone Winston was a big one that happened in 2016. Cyclone Yasa happened in December, I believe, yeah, December 16th uh, of 2020. Cyclone Anna happened literally a month or two later. So, early 2021. Now we're here, early 2022. Like, literally the start of 2022. And we're already seeing, like, there's uh, tsunami warnings in Fiji for these sort of um, natural disasters. And it's crazy. So we're kind of going to switch the gears here and kind of talk more about climate change. Um, Well, actually, first I want to ask you guys, like, why do you think people should even care? Like, why should youth even care if this is a problem? Because, like, right now it's just happening back in Tonga. It's, like, obviously affecting the majority of the South Pacific, including Fiji, right? Um, Because they have the tsunami warnings and everything. So why do you think people here should be concerned? I believe, like, we're the future generation where the next kind of like take on whatever comes our way and if we're not prepared for it if we have no knowledge about it now yeah we're gonna be very unprepared in the future oh yeah already we think we're not like as prepared because we don't even think that far but just say if something did happen and we had to step up we're like close to clueless about it literally and you know what fiji is one of the leading climate change um action in government governmental bodies and that sort of thing, because, like, obviously they have to be number one in yeah, <laughs> leading that, sense, right? Because right? yeah. they literally, because they suffer the most, that they have to think about these things for every day in their futures, right? Whereas we're lucky we don't really have to think about it, right? But then you think about it, who's really causing the problems here? Yeah. So, yeah. kind of leads me into my next question. But first, I want to get to your opinion on this. So, why do you think youth, adults, anyone, why should they care here? I mean, to be honest, adults, they've done their part. For some people that actually care about it, mm-hmm. but like the youth, we need to 
take a stand for it. Mm-hmm. Because we're the ones that are actually going to be able to do something. Mm-hmm. Whatever the adults right now have created, they've set a base for us, and it's not too much, obviously. Mm-hmm. And it's our chance to step up and actually make a, make a, cha- like a, make a move mm-hmm. and yeah. do something. Yeah. Make a change, in, in a way, yeah. right? And I totally agree with you both, because here being a youth uh, or yeah. right here, like climate change is an issue that our parents like they'll obviously see they've seen in their lives right yep. a lot of our parents like they're from fiji right oh, yeah. so they've seen their fair share of all this uh, natural disasters and um just environmental um impacts and just things of that sort negative impacts um but us obviously like being here in canada like not everybody really thinks about it right too much but even though our parents can and our elders they're able they're not going to experience as much Guess who's still going to be stuck on this planet living <laughs> while this is all going down, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. we're left. Yeah. We got to figure this out. So that's why we're here talking about this. We got to figure this out. It's a real issue. Um, so what do you guys think contributes to climate change? Um, like, based on your guys' knowledge, obviously, yeah. we're not experts sitting here. I only took, what, two environmental science classes, and I'm talking as if I know everything I don't. I Trust me, I know. Um, and obviously, you guys, like, not anywhere <laughs> near in environmental That's sciences true. at all. Um, but obviously, we're talking out of, like, our own personal experiences and personal opinions and what we already know, our own knowledge. And a lot of you guys probably, like, not experts on environmental science or climate change or anything like that. So we're kind of on the same page working together trying to figure this out. So what do you guys think from your knowledge? Some of the big ones are like obviously cars, gas, and that mm-hmm. gets used, greenhouse gases, um, big industries, big factories oh, yeah. as such, cutting down trees, and that's one Deforestation, yeah. What about you, Rebecca? Honestly, I haven't thought that far. I like I think about it on my free time, but like I don't ever think of solutions because there's so many things we could do. Yeah. But like will we ever actually take the yeah. action to make what sure? What do you it think causes out? it though? What causes like, yeah. climate change? And, like <clears throat> The problems that we have? Yeah. I don't know. I guess the way we decide to take care of the world, like, yeah. if you think about it right now for the pandemic, we are using masks and stuff. Mm-hmm. People throw that stuff everywhere. They oh, don't yeah. actually take care of it and, like, plastic in, like, the ocean and stuff Recycling like isn't yeah. done properly. So, like, these little things are kind of what adds up to all the bigger yeah. problems. Definitely. And you know what? Like, I feel like we're at a point in time where doing little things aren't enough anymore. And, like, people got to get with the program. You got to learn how to recycle properly. Yeah. You got to be able to take, like cars <laughs> like transportation is i think i believe the second uh, largest contributor because obviously it uh, contributes to greenhouse gas emissions but like you said pretty actually big companies and big industries that are actually contributing the most to this and kind of what i want to draw back on we as a country canada were <laughs> best known for well, like our oil yep. in yeah. alberta right and um our mining industry and um all these other things like for, like lumber as well too yep. right and so these are big industries that take big environmental impacts right yep. we don't necessarily have to deal with these impacts but now little islands like Fiji and Tonga and all these sort of things are experiencing the impacts of what our big companies are doing and polluting right mm-hmm. and so it, not just Canada, but I'm just kind of just yeah. saying like that. But like obviously like the states and We're like all these big, big yeah, yeah, big contributing countries. Um, so I want to ask you guys: Do you think it's like more people individually need to take action, or governments, at, or like big industries? Like who do you think is mainly responsible and needs to f- like fix it? I'd say um, the government needs to take a step mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. because they're one of the main people. If they set out like rules most likely people have to follow them and they can't be like little rules right yeah they have to be proper set out mm-hmm. rules with no leeway mm-hmm. you get what i mean yeah so big companies can't get by it in any way yeah. like adding their taxes big companies carbon always, taxes yeah. right mm-hmm. big companies already know how to get away from that they run away from taxes every single day <laughs> so like, big corporations yeah, exactly yeah. might as well just find them instead mm-hmm. instead of upping their taxes just yeah. fine them fine them for things that they shouldn't be doing mm-hmm. yeah no i think accountability that's the number one thing um not just companies but people as well right oh, yeah. like we need to be able to set ourselves accountable for the things that companies do and like you said so if companies are the big problem in your head that we should be putting one solution i guess to that that i'm just going to kind of throw out there we need to be putting more pressure on our governments to be 
putting more pressure on the companies to like yo cut it out yep. right exactly. uh, get what yeah. i mean right like it takes a lot of pressuring the government and like getting them to agree on things right but pressuring the government like even though the go- the government is responsible a lot of the times for monitoring and like pre- like pressuring different things and you know what i mean yeah, right they are the boss yeah they're kind of like the main overarching um like authorizing bodies but under them is us and like I think people also this kind of comes as a good um, plug is like you need to go vote because we at the individual level we're lucky to be in a de- democratic society where our vote matters mm-hmm. right yeah. and like you need to obviously like care about what these people are standing for what their campaigns are all about like do they even care about the environment do they not care about the environment what do they do like are they causing harm are they creating pipelines yeah. <laughs> like yeah. through, right like indigenous life that's a different story but <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. right yeah. like it, it all comes down to individual power too um rebecca what do you think um contributes uh or, or actually no that wasn't the question <laughs> who do you think contributes the most um to climate change and like all the negative impacts experienced by I our environment i agree with what Pray said before like the more bigger companies and like how you i think you also mentioned how like our like us individually like it matters so if we i guess like you know like i guess we like to protest a lot down here like mm-hmm. in canada yeah so if we start doing stuff like that actually voicing our opinions and stuff mm-hmm. like that to pressure the government to pressure these bigger companies yeah maybe slowly over time there could be some action taken mm-hmm. and you know what i think it's a big thing where it's like uh if it's out of sight it's out of mind yeah. you know what i mean and for climate change issues a lot of the time it's out of sight so it's out of mind Mm -hmm. and the fact that we're not seeing any protests it's out of sight so it's out of mind governments think that there's no problem they don't have to worry about it right no one's concerned about it but you that's the thing we we as um young people need to be voicing our opinions because you know what our voices do matter and people will listen um it's not an easy road obviously it's but there are ways for you to voice your opinions there's ways for you to also protest and all like get your opinion heard you know what i mean exactly. and like we're always connected to the government i feel like a lot of young people don't realize like they think of the government's like something separate and it's just like a bunch of old adults like and they have nothing to do with it right yeah. Yeah. even though they might be a bunch of old adults <laughs> but like you know what i mean like that's the thing. People, young people, they can start getting prepared to become our future politicians, oh, yeah. right? Make their campaigns work, like focused around issues that matter to us. This kind of conversation, I'm kind. Of, I feel like I'm going all over the place with it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. But you know what? Like that's the thing. Climate change and environmental problems connect to everything, exactly. and that's something I really want to stress. Um, especially, I feel like I'm having such a teacher moment right now, <laughs> <laughs> right now. Cause, Educating us right now. But yeah. it's like you know what? I'm so passionate about this topic because. It's something that really impacts our people. And not just here, like, obviously it impacts every single person on this planet. Oh, yeah. But it holds, like, a different place in my heart because, obviously, like, Fijians, especially back mm-hmm. home, they're experiencing all these issues. Yeah. So let's kind of steer the conversation now on more of a positive note. Um, and while we're still all ramped up and motivated and yep. ambitious <laughs> to do something about everything, right? Um, so what do you think um, are some solutions um, to climate change action? Mm. I'd say, for example, taking transit every day. Mm-hmm. That could easily be one of them. Uh, switching to electric cars. Yeah. Even, they, even though they do, like, when they mine for batteries, that does bring out a lot of fossil fuels. In the end, you're driving the car much longer, and it cuts more gas out yeah. of there you're creating yeah. more sustainability exactly. right exactly definitely those yeah. are two that come to my mind yeah i kind of do agree for transportation because i take like my uncle's car i use his i take that almost everywhere and it's yeah. terrible like i do like it's stop <laughs> no but you know what but th- that's the thing at least you could openly admit that that because we are so privileged we yeah. can do that sort yep. of stuff here right and like get away with it <laughs> low yeah. key right but it's like it's not something obviously that we should be like be like no that's bad well, obviously we're trying to say like yeah. it, it is bad <laughs> like you know what i mean like it shouldn't be like you, someone like ra- like rampaging and going all savage on you like yeah. no like what are you doing like and going like that but there's a way to kind of like be like okay you know what's bad like let's figure this out right yeah how are you me um good question <laughs> like i have just a list um i think on previous episodes i've also mentioned um 
like obviously uh, transportation, you hit that off uh, out the park yeah. um, with that one. Just so you literally like open the case and then bend and snap. <laughs> 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 Yeah, like a baton, basically, <laughs> but it's a straw. <laughs> but, like, see simple things like this we don't even think about. Um, any other last um, messages for, like, anyone watching this? Even though we're just talking about this and it's, like, pretty small, mm -hmm. this is hopefully going to make an impact in your guys' lives and you guys can talk about it and oh, yeah. definitely help each other out. And yeah. hopefully you guys bring this conversation up with your friends and family. That's yeah. It's, that's the smallest way to start everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's and conversation. Little actions can lead to bigger solutions. That's yeah. how I like to see it. That was so beautifully said. <laughs> like, I'm so touched. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you, Pranay and Rebecca, for joining me today um, to talk more about this subject matter. And I hope you guys at home are taking care, staying safe, and also keeping um, Tonga and all these South Pacific islands in your minds and prayers. Um, with that being said, we'll see you all next week. Let's go, yeah. I don't want to stay. Go to the end, they never seen that. Paint bags, always stay your face.